Hey, what's up guys? It's Jay with Short Point Creations and today we're talking about notch and tenon joinery. It's a very easy joint that you can do with just a table saw. Entry level woodworkers, you'll have no problem on this and it can really dress up your project. But real quick before we get started, I just want to mention if you're a new viewer to this channel, please make sure you subscribe. On Tuesdays we do tool reviews and as a subscriber you're automatically entered in the tool giveaway. After we're done reviewing that tool, we give that tool away to one of our subscribers. So you have to be a subscriber in order to get that tool. So please subscribe and here we go with Notch and Tendon Joinery. Hey, what's going on guys? When it comes to joinery, there's a lot of cool joints out there that allow you to not only provide some structural strength to your project, but also provide a nice aesthetic look. Uh, one of those that I've come across is notch and tenon joinery. Um, the notch and tenon joint consists of a dado, two notches on the side piece, and on the top work piece, you have two tenons and you just simply remove the material between the tenons. Once you have all that done, you take your tenons in your top piece and put it right into the dado of your side work piece. So let's talk about setting up to create a notch and tenon joint. It's very straightforward. You can do this on the table saw with a regular flat tooth blade, uh, but it works extremely better, extremely easier if you have a dado stack. Now I've got my dado stack installed already in my table saw. I have set the uh, outside blades, the chippers, and my shims to the point where the width of my dado stack is equal to the width of my top piece. That's important because we're going to be using this to cut a dado into the side workpiece which the top is going to be inserted into. Now it needs to be tight when it goes into that dado so this way the joint looks better. If there were some gaps it would function but aesthetically it wouldn't be very pleasing. So setting this through trial and error I must have taken out spacers or added spacers you know three or four times to finally get it perfect to where I felt it looked nice. Uh, but take your time setting up because as with everything, if you take your time setting up, your outcome is going to be so much greater. Alright, so let's go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the dado that's going to accept our bottom or top workpiece. Now, one word about our rip fence here. We're going to be using our rip fence as a stop. The reason you want to stop is because you want this distance from here to here, you want that to be the same on the top as it's going to be on the bottom as well. And setting your fence as a stop will give you that uniformity. Well, the only reason why we can get away with doing this this way and using this as a stop is because we are not going to cut all the way through. We're just doing a dado. So therefore, we're okay with it. All right. So for height of the dado stack for the dado, an eighth of an inch seems to work good. You know, that's personal preference once again. Also with the height, um, you know, the distance from the top of the dado cut to the top of the workpiece or your stop, that's personal preference as well. So let's go ahead and make our first cut, our dado. Now with everything, as soon as you make a cut, always check the fit and that fit looks looks pretty good now we're going to make our notch cuts now our notches 
are done by pushing the workpiece up to the stop and bringing it through. But if you were to cut it at this height, you'd only have an eighth inch tenon. I like something a little bit more substantial, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the height of my dado stack. And now we have our two notches and our dado. So our side workpiece is complete. So now we need to set up for our tenons. Now in order to do this, it's really straightforward. Take your piece with the notches and put it right on top. All right, align everything up on the sides and just strike a line on the edges with a pencil. And then we'll show you exactly where your tenons are going to be. Now we're going to be removing this material here, but we're going to be keeping the lines, okay? And we're going to sneak up on those lines with our cuts. And once you've done, once you've completed the cuts, on all your dados and notches, at that point you can go ahead and move your rip fence out of the way. You no longer need that stop. Okay? And we're just going to be going through removing all this material here until we have two healthy tenons. So here is our workpiece after we've cut our tenons and let's go ahead and do a fit. So we've got our dado and our notches here and our tenons. Let's go ahead and fit them together. And that is a notch and tenon joint. That one looks very good. Everything looks tight. The tolerances look nice. Very nice. A little sanding and everything looks really good. Hey guys, so as you see, notch and tenon joinery is something you can do fairly easy on your project, but what it returns to you as far as aesthetics is tenfold. Um, if you don't mind, in the comments below, put some of the common joinery that you use on your woodworking projects and what type of project it is. It may help somebody, you know, another viewer, if they see the type of joints you're using on your projects, it may trigger something in their next project to use that type of joint. And that's what this is all about, right? Helping others. So uh, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, share this with a friend of yours, and please subscribe to the channel because as a subscriber, you're automatically entered into our tool giveaway. So that works. Please make sure you hit the little bell and you'll be notified anytime a new video comes out. So guys, as always, thanks for coming, and I'll check you out later.